An economic and political philosophy, the founder of communism have known to be Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels around the later half of 19th century. When the two met in 1844, they found that their principles and ideologies were same. Published in 1848, together they wrote the Communist Manifesto. Their main aim was to bring an end to the class system that existed in the society which exploited the labour class. Once the labour class became aware, then there would be a conflict among the classes which would be settled through revolution. The worker class would rise against the bourgeoisie and institute a communist society. Both Marx and Engels consider the proletariat as people who had labour power, while the bourgeoisie were those who owned the means of production in the capitalist society. The nation would pass through a phase of socialism and ultimately settle for a pure communist society. Private ownership would be eliminated and the community would own the means of production. The thought was that all give as per their abilities and receive according to their requirements. The necessities of the society would be addressed first before the specific need of an individual was fulfilled. Many countries in South America, Asia, Eastern Europe and Africa follow this political philosophy. Later in the 19th century, communism started to take root in Russia too. The Bolsheviks gained power when the October Revolution happened. Russia was the first country where Marxist view was implemented in such power. They were the Communist Party and they sent their principles to all the European Socialist parties. Stalin was a leader who ruled Russia through communist philosophies. China also followed in the footsteps of Russia. Communism comes from the French word communism, which has Latin roots communis and ismen. The word was used for different social situations before it came to be in use for more modern ideas of political and economic organization. Communis means for or of the community, while ism which means a condition or action. French philosopher Victor de Upay was the first to have created the modern definition in 1777 in the book of Project de Communauté Philosophie. The principles that he mentioned in the book was followed by him. His book happens to be the backbone of the communist philosophy. Socialism is something which is basically something like communism and had become quite popular in France among the leftists. This was even before communism originated. However, both the words have different associations. Some developments can be tracked to different organizations which functioned in Americas and Europe as different associations, leagues, confederations and parties amalgamated them with their own political views. Some of the well-known leaders who have been known to have propagated communism are Fidel Castro, Ho Chi Minh, Marshal Tito, Lenin, Stalin, Karl Marx, Mao Zedong, Kim Jong-il are some of the famous ones. Development of Communism, 1840-1916 Pre-Marxist Communism The idea of communal ownership of wealth and property goes far back to the ancient times as that in Plato's The Republic and Pythagoreanism to as early as Christian Church as explained in the Acts of Apostles German preacher and theologian of the early Reformation, Thomas Munzer, also had led an Anabaptist communist movement in the German Peasants' War. Munzer was against both Roman Catholic Church and Luther. In a book named Utopia in the 16th century, the author, Sir Thomas More, envisioned a society where there was common ownership of property and the leaders of the society regulated its use through their supervision. There were many groups at the time of English Civil War who supported communism and the most famous of all were the Diggers, who were Protestants extremists. Several people continued to criticize the idea of private property and this continued even in the 18th century where religious thinkers like Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who was deeply inspired by the Jansenist movement in the Roman Catholic Church. The Jansenist movement was basically meant to put a halt to Protestantism, secularization and to stop the corruption of church by the aristocrats through democracy. 
One of the influential figures in the French Revolution's reign of terror is Maximilien Robespierre, who played an important role in establishing the French Republic, is highly praised by the Communists. It is said that Communism also existed outside Europe in America and other societies in Western Hemisphere. Karl Marx Karl Marx was born in a middle-class, wealthy family to Henrietta Pressburg and Heinrich Marx. His father, Heinrich, was a lawyer and his mother belonged to a rich business family. He was engaged to Jenny von Westphalen, who was an educated woman and belonged to the Prussian ruling class family. He became a journalist and he criticized both right-wing European administrations and the socialist and liberal movements. When Marx met Friedrich Engels in 1844, he finally found someone who had the same thoughts as him. By this time, Marx had already sketched an outline of Marxism. Later, he moved to Brussels and spent three years there. One of the most famous works that Marx and Engels wrote was Communist Manifesto. It was first published on February 21, 1948, and the political pamphlet was now the beliefs of the Communist League. The League was not a hidden society. They made their intentions clear to the people. Europe saw several rebellions and protests in the year 1848. The French overthrew the monarchy and established the French Second Republic. He was accused of revolutionary action and was arrested. He left for France, where the new government was in power. He settled in Paris temporarily and also took the headquarters of Communist League there and set up a German workers' club, along with different German socialists who resided there. In 1848, he went back to Cologne, Germany, in hope to see a revolution. There, he began the publication of a newspaper, Neue Reichische Zeitung. He was the main writer and the editor of the paper, as he wanted to put across his views without any obstructions. His thoughts were revolutionary, and because of this, he was always in and out of the court. Soon, the democratic parliament in Prussia collapsed, and a new cabinet of members who supported the king, Frederick William V, came up. His paper was closed down, and he was asked to leave the country. Later, Marx and his friend Engels began writing for around six newspapers. His first economic work was a contribution to the critique of political economy, which clearly explained the relationship between use and value. The edition was a hit and sold out in no time. His first volume of his famous work, Das Kapital, was published in 1867. The book was so much in demand that even Russia looked forward to an edition in Russian. The remaining two volumes were worked by him and Engels throughout their lives and were published after Marx died. Marx kept up his ideologies despite facing opposition from many. Most of his works were published after his death. He was truly an intellectual man. Early Development of Marxism During the late 19th century, many left-wing associations throughout Europe continuously campaigned against the right-wing groups who were autocrats and in power. After the fall of Napoleon III, the Socialists established Paris Commune in 1871, which was a form of government that did not last long as its members were mostly executed by the revolutionaries of the opposite side. A party known as German Social Democratic Party was created in 1875 and was joined by Karl Marx and his friend Frederick Engels. The number of supporters rose swiftly and the party was revolutionary in nature which led to its delegalization in 1879 by then-Chancellor Otto von Bismarck. When it was legalized in 1890, the party had already adopted Marxist principles. Some Germans did respect its ideologies and some leaders in the elections such as Willem Leibknecht and August Bebel became famous. Marxism not only gained fame in Germany, but was also successful in Netherlands, Hungary and Habsburg monarchy. Even though there were many other countries in Europe that did not accept Marxism, the new ideology had gained enough fame and support based on which a new organization was founded for all the Marxists across the world, Second International. There were many people, such as leftists, who criticized Marxism even the socialists added into its criticism. 
Marxist theory says the state would ultimately dissolve under Marxist government, but the Russian collectivist activist Mikhail Bakunin said that instead of this, the state would become more powerful and become dictatorial. Max Weber, who admired Marx for his ideologies, also criticized some of his suppositions when it came to nature of society. Max Weber was a sociologist. Many Marxists try to adjust with this changing nature of capitalism and criticism. Eduard Bernstein, for example, was a Marxist who tried to legally fight the then administrations on the treatment of the labor classes instead of just stressing on revolution as the conventional Marxist ideology says. Otto Bauer, Vladimir Lenin, Georgi Plekhanov, Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Kautsky all were against the thoughts of Bernstein and were staunch supporters of the orthodox Marx philosophies. They looked forward to overthrowing the government controlled by the bourgeoisie and establishing a dictatorship of the worker class. Early Communist States 1917-1944 Russian Revolution Russia was controlled by the Tsars and the huge nation was dependent on agriculture. Poverty was spread throughout while a handful of the elites enjoyed money and luxurious life. The environment was perfect for Marxism to flourish and the man who brought the ideologies here was Georgi Plekhanov, but it was Lenin who organized the movement. The government of the Tsars had him exiled to Siberia for a long time, but he escaped to make sure that Tsarism came to an end. Russian Social Democratic Labour Party a Marxist group was formed in Russia, which was later on divided into two groups, Mensheviks led by Julius Martov and Bolsheviks led by Lenin himself. In one of the revolutions of 1905 against the Tsar rule, Soviets, which was a workers' council, was formed in different parts of the country. A democratic reform was implemented forcefully and the Duma, which was an elected form of government, was formed. The newly formed government faced problems and participation of Russia in the First World War caused more unrest in the country in 1917. October Revolution made the Bolsheviks powerful and they began to change the structure of the company based on the principles of Marx. The industries were nationalized and the land was confiscated from the rich elites and redistributed among the peasants. Later, they withdrew from the war against Germany through the Treat of Brest-Litovsk. The Russians did not take it positively as the nation lost much land and had to pay heavily to the Germans. The Bolsheviks faced a lot of resistance from different groups who had their own forces. These groups had their own thoughts and ideologies which they wanted to use in reforming the then much troubled Russia. The Socialist Revolutionary Group formed the Komich in Samara, the Social Democrats had their power rooted in Democratic Republic of Georgia, there were the Western powers and there were some forces of the Tsars who were known as White Guard. This differentiation in thoughts and power were the cause of so many groups and all this chaos caused revolts and rebellions which ultimately led to the Russian Civil War. The Bolsheviks, with their Marxist ideologies, won the war and took over the whole nation. They had their base established at Kremlin in the city of Moscow. The Russian SFA Republic was redesignated as Union of Soviet Socialist Republics in 1922. Lenin suffered with poor health and stepped down from his seat as the leader in 1924, after which he soon died of sickness. Josef Stalin took over the control of the new nation after Lenin carrying forward the ideologies of Marxism. Mongolia, Comintern and Communism in Europe The Second International had collapsed in the year 1916 and the Bolshevik government in Russia took an initiative to organize the establishment of an international communist organization which would be the Third International. However, it was known as the Communist International and was famously abbreviated as Comintern. Irrespective of its international status, Comintern was dominated by Kremlin till it functioned. In 1921, Soviet Union attacked Mongolia. The act was to help the country fight the Chinese, who were then controlling the nation. The Russians instituted a Marxist form of government and declared Mongolia as the Mongolian People's Republic in 1924. 
All the communist groups that had the support of Russia soon spread through Europe and the influence of the Russian Revolution still persisted. There was an uprising known as Spartacist in 1919 in Germany. The rebellion workers were supported by the weapon-bearing communists. The German government was quick to react and suppress the revolt viciously with the help of right-wing paramilitary team, Freikorps. There were some notable deaths in this rebellion and famous German communists named Rosa Luxemburg and several others lost their lives. Furious communists took over Bavaria, Germany, after a few months of this uprising and formed the Bavarian Soviet Republic. Unfortunately, their power checked again and the Freikorps massacred about 1,200 communists and the people who supported their act in 1919. Hungary was already disturbed with political ups and downs and soon had to face a defeat in the First World War in 1919. This commotion led to the formation of a Social Democratic Party while the communists took the reign of the country in their hands. Bela Kun was the leader of the Hungarian Soviet Republic. He was quick to take control and soon began the implementation of reforms in the communist way. It was not long when Hungary was invaded by Romania and the government of Bela Hun came crashing down. Many communist leaders were executed while some of them escaped to foreign countries. There was a strike of the worker class in the year 1921 in Milan and Turin in northern Italy, which the communists took as an opportunity and revolted with them. Then government quickly crushed the revolt. The communists once again revolted in Germany in the same year and again in 1923, both of which proved to be unsuccessful as the government put an end to both these rebellions in no time. Bulgaria also saw an uprising from the communists in 1923, but they were unsuccessful like the others that happened through the other countries in Europe. Soviet Union under the rule of Stalin Josef Stalin was a devoted follower of Lenin, who was quite powerful in Soviet Union. Nikolai Bukharin supported Stalin in his leadership, but they have several opponents in the government. Some of the famous people who were against the thoughts of Stalin were Grigory Zinoviev, Lenin Trotsky and Lev Kamenev. Stalin had his own way of making a communist society. He created a variation in his work, which was known as Stalinism. Some of the policies, such as the new economic policy, which was a free market policy that Lenin had permitted under his rule, was abandoned by Stalin. He overran several capitalist ideologies and implemented his rules. There were changes made in union agricultural production and modernized it with the help of machinery and tractors. He collectivized the farms persuasively and even collected their grains according to the decided targets. The industrial workers had enough food, but the peasants, who did not wish to move to the industry, went hungry. People owning little lands were usually targeted. Comitern was under the control of Stalin. He had a policy introduced in this international organization which opposed all the leftists who were not followers of Marxism. He called them social fascists. There were many communists who did not agree to this policy of Stalin, like Jews Humbert Droz. He said that the left wing should unite against the rise of right wing movements such as fascism throughout Europe. Stalin promoted a movement in 1930s which was known as Popular Front. Under this movement, the communist parties, the socialists, along with some other political groups, came together for a cause which was to organize support for a republican cause in the Spanish Civil War. The Great Terror the Great Terror or Great Purge is referred to the period in Soviet Union between 1936 and 1938, when there was a situation of political repression in the nation that involved the execution of rebels from the Communist Party and to unite Stalin's authority. The targeted people were the leaders of the Communist Party and those of armed forces and government officials, all of whom were party members. There were other people in the society who were also affected by this. The party and the officials were afraid of rebellions from the peasant class. There were mass migration of peasants who moved to the cities in millions. This came as a threat to Stalin, who feared an invasion from these peasants. There were three big trials conducted in Moscow. The Prah senior leaders of Communist Party were held accused for conspiring against the capitalist and fascist powers to have Stalin and other eminent leaders of the party murdered to dislodge Soviet Union and bring back capitalism in the nation. 
The first trial took place in the month of August 1936, where there were 16 people executed. Two famous people among them were Lev Kamenev and Grigory Zinoviev. The second trial saw 17 people executed on January 1937. These people were of lesser importance but were blamed of conspiring with Germany against Soviet Union. Yuri Pyatakov, Karl Radek and Grigory Sokolnikov were among the assassinated. The third trial was a secret one and was held in the month of June of 1937. The Red Army commanders had to face trial and many more were assassinated. The first two trials happened publicly and every one of the assassinated person was given a chance to speak. They confessed their crimes after which they were executed. But the others have something else to say. Extortion and psychological pressure such as threats to kill their families were used to help them confess. Kamenev and Zinoviev requested that their families be spared if they confess their crimes. Stalin did not keep his promise and most of the family members of the executed were caught and killed. Spread of Communism 1945-1957 Kremlin established new international coordination bodies under the communist government in 1947, which comprised of Women's International Democratic Federation, World Federation of Democratic Youth, International Union of Students, World Peace Council and World Federation of Democratic Youth. There were other bodies which comprised of scientists, journalists, lawyers and doctors. The World Federation of Trade Unions was set up with the purpose to unite trade union federations throughout the globe and was based in Prague. Despite the presence of non-communist unions, the federation was controlled by the communists of Soviet. Britain, America, along with some more non-communist unions separated from the Federation. Soviet Union Revolts, rebellions and especially the war had devastated Soviet Union and there was a recovery program that was required, which did happen. Housing, reconstruction of industries and transportation began to take place. Along with the construction work, the soldiers were demobilized and the civilians were migrated. The period for turmoil for Soviet Union was not yet over. In the winters of 1946 to 1947, famine struck the lands, which turned out to be one of the deadliest in the 20th century. Stalin faced no oppression, as he had Gulag in place. Anyone showing signs of disobeying the orders of Stalin was sent to Gulag. Gulag was a Soviet government-administered forced labor camp. It was an important instrument of Stalin through which he brought a sense of fear within the Russians. Britain and United States no more had friendly relations with the Soviet Union. They were against the way Stalin exercised political powers on Eastern Europe. Cold War had already started by 1947. Stalin too believed that capitalism would not sustain for long if countries started to put pressure. Stalin misjudged the economic strength of the West and saw the Western countries join hands to contain or stop the expansion of Soviet Union. In 1950, he permitted North Korea to invade South Korea. He was wrong when he thought that a war would end soon. It came to him as a shock when the Americans joined in the war to support South Korea and defeated the North Koreans. China also entered the Korean War and Stalin was happy about it as the Americans moved back to the pre-war boundaries. However, this just gave rise to more tension between the nations. United States began to prepare its economy to get into a long conflict with Soviet Union. They built the hydrogen bomb and fortified the NATO alliance, which now covered Western Europe. After 1945, Stalin concentrated on building up the reputation of Soviet Union as a superpower. However, Stalin was physically growing weak but wished to hold on to the power that he had. The system that was created by him mirrored the style of Tsarist rule but in a more modern way. Stalin needed loyal people and he also built committees so that the youth could join in and support the system that he had set up. The deputies of Stalin used rigorous ways to train them which helped in ruling the country in a united way. Eastern Europe the Red Army was quite successful in uniting Eastern and Central Europe, giving control to the Communists. While Czechoslovakia welcomed it, 
Hungary and Poland were forced to accept communist power. The Social Democratic Party was forced to fuse with the Communistic Party. Earlier, the people were willing to accept change such as limited nationalism of industry and growth of exhaustive social welfare states. There were many groups that were non-communists but supported socialism, besides the concept of forced collective agriculture and recession of 1953 in Soviet, which first came up in Berlin, led to deep unrest in the nation. The biggest challenge of Stalin was to control the Hungarian Revolution of 1956. There was a social democratic party formed that stood against communism. There were strikes and revolts and many independent worker councils were formed. There were two non-communist parties that sided socialism and also got their independence. The communists retaliated and crushed this move with military strikes and executions. The Central Workers' Council of Greater Budapest was also crushed. The whole world knew about this revolt and because of this, many people left the Communist Party. Leonid Brezhnev, who was a Soviet leader, ordered a military attack on August 20, 1968, as he destroyed the Warsaw Pact. The Soviets also threatened to go against the British-French-Israeli invasion in Egypt. This again led to resignation of people from parties. West Germany The Cold War was concentrated in the West Germany and West Berlin, and there were many communist fronts that were set up. For instance, in West Germany, the Society of German-Soviet Friendship had about 13,000 members, but it was called a Communist Front and banned in 1953. Democratic Cultural League of Germany functioned differently when it had been created, but then it came under the control of communists. There were 155 organizations that were already communists and about 54 of them that had been infiltrated by the communists. China Mao Zedong came to power in 1949 in China and with him came the rule of Communist Party. China supported North Korea in a war against South Korea that was supported by United Nations and United States. The war lasted from 1950 to 1953. The undeclared war ended in a military standstill but Mao took this opportunity to learn who was supporting capitalism in China. China had close relations with Moscow because of Stalin. Stalin had sent many technical experts to China to assist the process of industrialization in China. In 1953, Stalin died and with his death, the friendly relations between China and Soviet also ended as Mao thought Stalin's successors did not support communism. Mao said that the new Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev did not support Marxism and Leninism and was trying to bring back capitalism. By 1960, things between the two nations had become quite sour. Both the nations began taking support of communist supporters across the globe. Basically, the globe was split into two unfriendly campaigns. Zedong, along with his supporter Deng Xiaoping, began the Great Leap Forward in 1957-1961, aiming at quick industrialization of China. Villages were used as the base instead of cities, and all ownership of private lands ended. The peasants had to work together big combined farms and industries, such as steel mills, were ordered to be started. Industrial plants were built in secluded areas without proper experts, managers or transportation. Industrialization failed badly and agriculture output swooped down which resulted in famine and led to the death of millions. Deng was appointed to take out China from this mess. Deng used practical policies which Mao did not like. The failure of industrialization had made Mao unpopular and he had to remain quiet for some time. Later, when he returned back in power, he had Deng and his allies removed in the Cultural Revolution, which took place between 1966 and 1969. Cold War and Revisionism, 1958-1979 Cultural Revolution in China Cultural Revolution in China was mayhem that happened between 1966 and 1976, where all the party leaders and intelligentsias were targeted. Mao wanted to cleanse communism by getting rid of all traditionalists and pro-capitalists. He did this by imposing Maoist belief in the party. 
this was something like the Great Terror of Stalin. Mao's Cultural Revolution left a deep impact on China, making it weak politically, culturally and economically for several years. There were millions who were accused of treachery against communism and were removed from their posts and killed or imprisoned or sent to work in farms as labourers. Two of the most important people who assisted him in this movement were his wife Zhang Qing and Marshal Lin Biao. Mao said that the revisionists should be violently removed. The youth of China formed Red Guard groups throughout the nation which led to the purge of leaders who were looking to follow capitalism and Deng Xiaoping was amongst them. Mao's cult grew his power and after his death in 1976, the people whom he had imprisoned or sent to work as laborers were returned to their power. Cuban Revolution Fulgencio Batista was supported by the Democratic Socialist Coalition. He was twice the president of Cuba and forcefully used his powers. Fidel Castro led a Cuban revolution and removed Batista from his post. Fidel Castro and his revolutionaries were all communists and they set up their government. United States, who had supported Cuba earlier, was not happy about the overthrow of Batista. They invaded Cuba in 1961 but were unable to defeat Fidel Castro's government. Soviets stationed nuclear weapons in 1962 in Cuba so they could protect their communist allies. United States also installed its weapons in Turkey secretly and there was a fear of nuclear war for some time. However, there was a compromise made and Soviet had their nuclear weapons removed from Cuba and so did the Americans. Eurocommunism Eurocommunism had become quite popular in countries of Western Europe that lasted from 1960s to the 1980s. The Communist Party of Spain, Finland's party and Italian Communist Party were where it was the strongest. The thoughts and ideologies were developed by those members of the Communist Party who were disheartened with both China and Soviet and looked forward to an independent program. They did not seek in destroying the ideologies of capitalism entirely and they did support democracy and free speech and liberal parliament and they wished to win the support of the people by transforming the bureaucracies slowly. The Communist Party of Spain replaced Marxist-Leninist with a new slogan that read Marxist, Democratic and Revolutionary. This was done in 1978 but the movement did not last long and soon bleached out in 1980s when communists fell in Eastern Europe. Fall of Communist Powers 1980-1992 After decades of being embraced by millions, communism slowly began to near its fall. There were a series of events that took place between 1989 and 1991 which led to the fall of communist governments in Soviet Union and Eastern Europe. Countries started facing opposition and then when the president of Soviet, Mikhail Gorbachev, did not send the Russian troops to suppress the revolts, the governments began to fall slowly. Poland was the first to be crushed. The communists here had agreed to free elections which resulted in a change of power in June 1989 people began to demand to be freed from communism throughout the East. Germany followed soon. The Berlin Wall fell and East and West Germany were united. The communist Czechoslovakian government resigned in November 1989. There was an upheaval in December 1989, fell the Romanian communist leader Nicolae Ceausescu. The parliament of Bulgaria invalidated the monopoly of Communist Party on 1990 and again in 1991 the popular opposition forced the communist cabinet in Albania to put down their resignation. In August 1991 the communists organized a coup d'etat against the president of Soviet Union Mikhail Gorbachev which failed. With this failure also ended the communist party's authority on the government and military. Communism 1993 to present. When the communist governments fell in Soviet Union, the power that was held by the state-based Marxist philosophies throughout the world was enfeebled. Yet there still remain many communist movements, big and small, that continue to display their thoughts. Vietnam, People's Republic of China and Laos 
all began market economies, but there was not much privatization done in the 1980s and 1990s. France, Portugal, Spain and Greece all have strong communist parties and actively participate in strikes and marches, especially on International Workers' Day. This shows how communism is still alive in several hearts. Communism is still alive in Europe. China still happens to have a communist government. After market economies were introduced in China somewhere in the 1970s, the economy of the nation has been growing in leaps and bounds. Most of Mao's ideas were not in the benefit of China, yet it continues to function as a communist nation as it was the communist ideologies that reformed China. Korea split into North and South and North Korea was taken over by the Kim family who have been dictating it since 1948. Although China helps to protect the borders of North Korea, it doesn't supply it with any other things. Communism still persists in North Korea. Fidel Castro overthrew the reign of Batista and established communism in Cuba. Cuba, however, seems to be concerned about their people and is known to have one of the best healthcare systems in the world. Laos happens to be a communist nation too. Laos is highly corrupted and is one of the poorest nations in the world. It has limited trade relations with other countries. Vietnam still continues to be communist in its government. Till 1986, Vietnam continued to be a true communist nation after which it had to take international aids for which it brought about many political reforms in the country. Although there still persist some problems in the country, such as income and gender inequality, the nation is quickly developing its economy. For Angola, communism ended on August 27, 1992. They had strong relations with Russia, Cuba and Mozambique, which were all communists. The Chinese government has made a lot of investments in Angola. The nation is slowly progressing and has also increased their GDP. Between the period of 1976 and 1992, Angola saw many revolts and rebellions. There was a period of unrest when the communists governed. The nation enjoys peace and conflicts are nowhere to be seen now. Afghanistan was also a country that followed communism earlier, but April 28, 1992 was the last day for it. The Soviet armies backed the nation, but after 1992, the Russian armies couldn't help them anymore. However, United States have been in Afghanistan since then. Yugoslavia saw the end of communism on April 27, 1992. Communism began in 1943 here. Yugoslavia was ruled by Tito, who was the opposite of other communist states. His relations with the Soviet were not good, but he had quite good relations with America. Yugoslavia had become a ground for internal wars, which protracted to 1990s after Tito's death in 1980. Second largest Marxist state in Africa, Congo, was initially led by Marianne Nugowabi. Both Soviet Union and France supported Congo and when communism established itself in 1970s, there was peace, but later on, civil war started in late 1990s. Congo is still not a peaceful nation, even after communism ended in 1992. Neighbour of Yugoslavia, Albania, was also a place where communism had its roots. The nation has slowly established a new constitution and has been trying to adopt Western style of democracy in the nation. Communism was the thought of being free to live a decent life, free of the dominating aristocrats. It also shows the determination of the working class. If they want, they can overthrow thrones and tumble the governments. The ideologies were basically to use violence and remove the class struggle. Yet some of them have seemed to have gone to extremes in using Marxism to reform the society. The violence not only engulfed those who were guilty, but also those who were innocent. There is no count in the number of lives that were lost in this struggle. People who gained power did not seem to use it well, as they might have concentrated on just implementing the ideologies rather than actually using it for the betterment of the society. The extremist views of the communist leaders were the main cause of downfall of communism. While there are still people who vouch for communism and support it, but they haven't been able to get enough votes to establish their governments. There are countries that are still running on communist governments, but the effectiveness of most of them are questionable. 
Whether or not communism would gain back the same power as it had previously is a question unanswered for now.